News 1, UK PM Liz Truss under pressure over tax cuts. The cabinet is attempting to rally behind embattled British Prime Minister Liz Truss on Thursday as her Conservative Party backbenchers are up in arms against her tax-cutting economic policies, which they see as favoring the rich amid a cost-of-living crisis and giving the opposition Labour Party a lead in opinion polls. Foreign Secretary James cleverly warned that it would be a disastrously bad idea to think about replacing Truss as the Tory leader, just over a month after she was elected by the party membership in a leadership battle with former Chancellor Rishi Sunak on September 6. News 2, Russian missiles target more than 40 Ukraine cities, towns. Russian missiles pounded more than 40 Ukrainian cities and towns, officials said on Thursday, after a UN. General Assembly resolution called Moscow's annexation of Ukrainian territory illegal and Ukraine's allies committed more military aid. Russia repeated its position that the West, by helping Ukraine, indicated that they are a direct party to the conflict and warned the admission of Ukraine to NATO could trigger World War III. Kiev is well aware that such a step would mean a guaranteed escalation to a World War III, Deputy Secretary of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Alexander Venediktov, told the state TASS news agency on Thursday. News 3, bomb threat led to evacuation of Norway gas plant. A bomb threat against a natural gas processing facility in central Norway forced the site's evacuation and briefly halted operations, Norwegian media reported on Thursday, with police later confirming that the threat wasn't credible. The incident came amid heightened security on key energy, internet, and power infrastructures following last month's underwater explosions that ruptured two key pipelines in the Baltic Sea that supply gas to Germany. The blasts and ruptures happened in international waters off the Baltic coastline of both Sweden and Denmark but within the country's exclusive economic zone. The damaged Nord Stream pipelines discharged huge amounts of methane, a potent greenhouse gas, into the air. Gas from Norway's Ormenlang is piped along the seabed to the onshore Nahamna facility which was evacuated. News 4, Pakistan reports rape of a woman every two hours. A woman is raped in Pakistan in every two hours, according to a recent survey, highlighting the unsafe conditions for women in the country where cases of honor killing is also rampant. The survey, which was conducted by Pakistani Channel's investigation unit based on the data collected from the Punjab province's Home Department and Ministry of Human Rights, also found that while the rape cases of women spiked, the conviction rate remained an abysmal 0.2%. Newly collected and compiled data showed that as many as 21,900 women were reported to have been raped in the country from 2017 to 2021. This meant that around 12 women were raped across the country daily, or one woman every two hours, said the survey. News 5, Xi Jinping on course for historic third term at Zero Covid Congress. China's 20th Communist Party Congress, which begins on Sunday, is expected to deliver President Xi Jinping a historic third term in control of a country his Zero Covid policy has closed off from much of the rest of the world. Should everything go to plan, by the end of the twice-in-a-decade meeting, the 69-year-old will be reconfirmed as the party's general secretary, cementing his position as China's most powerful leader since Mao Zedong. Security has been stepped up around Beijing's Tiananmen Square, where on Sunday almost 2,300 delegates from every province in China will gather at the imposing Great Hall of the People. And as she continues to insist the country sticks to its policy of containing and eliminating the coronavirus within its borders, the Congress will take place under strict health protocols. News 6, Shanghai COVID cases jump to three-month high as schools close. Shanghai's COVID cases jump to a three-month high as city officials quietly shut schools and a raft of other venues to try to rein in a flare-up that's hit the financial hub just days before one of China's most important political events. The city reported 47 new infections for Wednesday, the most since July 13 when a brief flare-up revived fears of another general lockdown. Of the latest cases, all but two were found in quarantine. Beijing recorded 18 cases Wednesday. While small by international standards, the flare-up is occurring just days before China's once-in-five-years party congress, 
when President Xi Jinping is expected to secure a precedent-breaking third term in power. New 7, North Korea says Kim Jong-un supervised cruise missile tests. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un supervised tests of long-range cruise missiles, which he described as a successful demonstration of his military's expanding nuclear strike capabilities and readiness for actual war, state media said on Thursday. Wednesday's tests extended a record number of weapons demonstrations this year by North Korea, which has punctuated its testing activity with threats to preemptively use nuclear weapons against South Korea and the United States if it perceives its leadership as under threat. Analysts say Kim is exploiting the distraction created by Russia's war on Ukraine, using it as a window to accelerate arms development as he pursues a full-fledged nuclear arsenal that could viably threaten regional U.S. allies and the American homeland. News 8, Israeli forces shoot dead Palestinian in West Bank. Israeli forces shot dead a Palestinian teenager in the occupied West Bank on Wednesday during clashes in a refugee camp, the Palestinian Health Ministry said. Usama Adawai, 18, was killed by occupation, Israeli military, live fire to the stomach in the Al Arab camp, in the southern West Bank, the health ministry said. Official Palestinian news agency Wafa said he was killed in clashes during which Israeli forces shot at Palestinians and used tear gas. News 9, Sri Lanka cabinet approves downgrade to low-income country. Sri Lanka's cabinet has approved a proposal to downgrade the island nation's economic status to low-income country, in order to get access to concessional funding from international organizations, the cabinet spokesman said on Tuesday. Sri Lanka's economy is in a deep slump, shrinking at an annual 8.4% in the June quarter in one of the steepest quarterly declines. Per capita GDP was $3,815 in 2021, which had placed it in the lower middle economy category, according to the World Bank. The cabinet had decided to downgrade the island to low income on the World Bank list, said cabinet spokesman Bandi Laguna Wardane. News 10, Russian army will be annihilated if Putin nukes Ukraine, EU foreign policy chief Borrell. EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell warned Moscow on Thursday that its forces would be annihilated by the West's military response if President Vladimir Putin uses nuclear weapons against Ukraine. Putin is saying he is not bluffing. Well, he cannot afford bluffing, and it has to be clear that the people supporting Ukraine and the European Union and the member states, and the United States and NATO are not bluffing neither, Borrell said at the opening of a diplomatic academy in Brussels. Any nuclear attack against Ukraine will create an answer, not a nuclear answer but such a powerful answer from the military side that the Russian army will be annihilated. Fears that Moscow could use a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine have grown after Putin issued veiled threats as he staged the annexation of four occupied regions in the face of loses on the battlefield. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg has warned Russia it faces severe consequences if it launches a nuclear attack on its pro-Western neighbor.